there is a supernatural key that activates increase it is possible to labor in your business get your goods and display them and you have quality goods at cheap price and yet there will be no increase in sales but there is a supernatural enterprise that god has saddled us with that he has given to us that guarantees increase in all things and that enterprise is our focus in this study let's look at the book of psalm 67 our emphasis will be from verse 5 but i'd like us to read from verse 1 from verse 1 psalm 67 says god be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that's a good place to say amen, amen. that your way may be known on earth your salvation among all nations this this is a blessing with purpose do you understand that the reason he's asking god for mercy upon us and blessings is so that we can perpetuate the ways of god we can sponsor the activities of god's ways upon the face of the earth a true believer exists only to glorify god and if your activity is not in any way adding value to the kingdom of god you are a liability and you see god has orchestrated some principles in the kingdom some security checks that can limit the supply of grace to such a personality do we understand that so we must seek to learn his ways and make it known and we must also support financially materially physically mentally in all ramification what we make the way of god known on the face of the earth it could be supporting missionaries it could be sponsoring teaching programs daily devotionals you know whatever will project the ways of god on earth so that his salvation can be made known among all nations praise god next verse he said let the people peoples praise you O god let all the peoples praise you oh let the nations be glad and sing for joy for you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth now this is where we'll be taking our discourse from he said let the peoples praise you O god let all the peoples praise you then the earth shall yield our increase god our own god shall bless us god shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him go back to verse 5 praise god you see you can never go wrong with praise you can never never go wrong with praise The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. That means that the presence of God is inaccessible without praise. 
we praise God for his goodness and we worship him for his holiness that means that we praise God for the things he has done for us and we worship him for who he is and I want you to know that it does not matter the situation surrounding your life the circumstances you find yourself praise can never be wrong that's why the scriptures admonishes us in hebrews 13 verse 15 he says by him therefore let us offer continually the sacrifice of praise which is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name so god wants us to engage in this enterprise of the sacrifice of praise it becomes a sacrifice when the circumstances does not encourage you to praise god like how job lost everything and in spite of losing everything the bible says that job fell down and did what and worship why because he understood the power of worship In 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18, he says, In everything give thanks. In good times, bad times, difficult situations, give thanks. Why? He said, it is the will of God concerning us in Christ Jesus. Why will it be God's will for us to give thanks in everything? It is because when we praise God, no matter the circumstances, we come into his presence enter into his gate with thanksgiving into his court with praise and in his presence there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore so praise is the gate pass into the courts of the lord and if you can assess it one of the reasons for fullness of joy is answers to prayers jesus said act and you shall receive that your joy may be full so if you can assess the throne room even if you have lost everything when he answers you you will get double for your trouble and that was what job had he had double for his trouble i pray that you will take the business of praising and thanking god seriously amen it does not matter what you are going through when Saul was afflicted by unclean spirit distressing spirit and he was depressed cast down the recommendation of his servants was that praise will be offered to God and the mystery that was appointed to lead that praise was David and the Bible says each time David brought praise into that equation, Saul became delivered, healed, and refreshed. You can't go wrong with praise. Anytime there's a challenge, anytime there's a limitation, anytime there's a difficulty, praise God. And besides that, praise will generate what? increase he says let the people praise you oh god let all the peoples praise you next verse he says then the earth you see in response to the praise the earth will have no option but to release an increase there's increase in your business there's increase in your marriage there's increase in your career in your ministry but they only respond to the power of praise even the earth itself will withhold its increase until god is acknowledged you see all creation knows the creator do you understand that the earth knows the creator the birds they knows the creator the plants knows the creator and if you truly want to enjoy lasting increase in any area of your life that is unfruitful, engage the power of praise. Praise God continually concerning that circumstance. 
Do you understand that? Even if there are forces fighting, when God shows up, they'll be broken down. You know, when we talk about spiritual warfare with the instrument of praise or warfare praise, it's not that we go to praise the devil. It's not that we confront demons and begin to praise them or sing songs and say, uh, set and don't fall for God, uh, macha, macha. I match and me don't die. You know, some people <laughs> they, they, they generate some wonderful songs and they think that because they sing those songs that Satan will fall. You are joking. There's only one way Satan will flee or forces of darkness will fall when it comes to using the instrument of praise is praising God. It's when we praise God, it means that we are surrendering to God. And when we surrender to God, the Bible says, submit yourself to God. And after you have submitted yourself to God and God is with you, when you resist the devil, he will, what? He will flee. So there is no song you can sing, no lyrics that will cause Satan to flee, except God acknowledges that song and comes down. Do you understand that? It is the presence of God that causes the forces of darkness to flee. And so if they were attacking you, afflicting you, contending with you, as you engage in that worship, in that praise, and God shows up, oh my God, there is no devil that can stand in his presence. The Bible says the demons acknowledge that there is only one God and they tremble. He has not come, oh, they just know that. If you say, Satan, there's one God. He said, that's true, that's true. And then he does what? He trembles. When he shows up, the mountains meant like was. When he shows up, the demons will, they will scream. Do you understand that? Limitations, obstacles will be destroyed. In his presence, no devil, no affliction, no attack, no oppression, no demonic manipulation, no incantation, curses, or enchantment can stand. In his presence, darkness is completely expelled. But what brings him on the scene is engaging the enterprise of praise. That was the secret of Paul and Silas. Those guys have not eaten all day. Those guys were bleeding on their back. They were beaten with rod. They were in the dungeon. And their hands and feet were fastened with shackles. But the Bible says at midnight. You know, midnight for us doesn't mean 12 midnight. It means in the darkest of your experience. Your limitation when the chiefs are down, when there is no hope anywhere, and that's where Nigeria is right now. You know, when there are difficulties, there are limitations, and everything seems to be glooming, darkness. That is a time of midnight when there's no food to eat, when you don't know where the life partner will come from, when the marriage seems to be failing, when the Children seems to be difficult to raise. When all hope that a new lease of life will come seems to fail. In that midnight hour, that darkness of night, Paul and Silas gave us the cure for such situation. And it is to bring God on the scene. And what it takes to bring God on the scene is praise. So their prayers were prayers of thanksgiving. And their songs or hymns were songs of praise. And as they engaged the power of praising, worshipping, acknowledging God. You know that God does not send angels to receive praise. He can send them to deliver answers to prayers. You know like when Cornelius fasted and prayed, God sent an angel. When the church at Antioch fasted and prayed concerning Peter, God sent an angel. But you see, God in our beaters, the praises of his people. 
And so when the praise began to surge, the fragrance of incense, very sacrificial in nature, because these men were bleeding. They were beaten and battered. They were hungry and tired. I mean, that should be the last thing for them to do, giving thanks. When all hope is lost in the darkest of night, bleeding, hungry, tired, afflicted, falsely accused for doing ministry. For yielding to the leading of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, have you ever been led by God and you got into trouble? Huh? That was what they experienced. It was the Holy Ghost that God grieved in Paul. You know that word grieve is not a word that depicts the emotion of humans. Humans don't get grieved. Humans get hungry. But there's a personality that gets grieved. The Bible says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed until the day of redemption. The redemption of the purchased possession. He said, Do not grieve him. So it's the Holy Ghost that gets grieved. When the Bible says, And Paul became grieved, it means the Holy Ghost began to register his displeasure concerning the divination of the slave girl which were labeled or nicknamed prophecies these are the men the servants of the lord who shows us the way of salvation and so in response to the grievances of the holy spirit apostle paul was led to rebuke the spirit ah, you don't have a part in this matter ah, you are joining the prayer meeting you are oh so you want to form alliance here no it's not possible mm, come out and then being led of god hell let loose because the hope of gain was gone you see it's not difficult to distinguish uh, a genuine prophetic ministry from a false prophets or someone who is operating by the spirit of divination for a genuine prophetic ministry the the aim is to glorify god the aim is to impact men but for a false one the intention is what gain money and pleasure do you understand that that's that's the passion that's the drive what is he need for me So, for yielding to God, they ended up in the dungeon. Now, I'm not saying every leading of God <laughs> will end you up in the dungeon. Do you understand that? But you see, that can happen. Hello. That can what? Aha. You know, the, the Bible says you'll be hated for my sake. So, if you are persecuted for his sake, don't worry. Take it to the glory of his name. Rejoice. When Peter and John were beaten, they did what? They rejoice. And counted it all joy to suffer persecution or be beaten for his name's sake. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You know, many of us don't want to hear this type of message. You just want the Lord will bless you, the Lord will increase you. Uh, see, <laughs> the Christian faith is beautiful, it's sweet, but there's also a difficulty. Mm, there's also a narrow path. There's narrowness and difficulty in that way. That's why it says trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. Amen. All right. So the scripture says, as they lifted up their voice and praised God so suddenly and surely, the one who inhabited the praises of his people came down. And when he showed up, oh my God, the earth quaked. And you see, even though the earth quaked, the prison did not capsize. Do you understand that? It didn't descend to the lower parts of the earth. 
So that tells you that it was God that showed up. If it was a natural earthquake, what would have likely happened is that the prison house would have disintegrated. And then all the walls will come crumbling. But that wasn't the experience. When the earth quaked, all the chains and demons and agents of darkness that were gathered there, they were all scattered. They, even the prison gates submitted to the lordship of God without keys. They opened up. The chains, the fetters, everything gave way. And these men became free by the presence of God. May God's presence invade your space. May God's presence come down as you acknowledge and praise him in the mighty name of Jesus. The presence came down and there was liberty. Do you understand that? Because in his presence, there is fullness of joy, no bondage. So there was liberty. And when the jailer saw what had happened and thought the prisoners had escaped and wanted to take his life, to tell you that they were not praying for vengeance, Paul shouted and said, do yourself no harm, we are here. And when he brought light and saw that they were there, he fell down without a message. He gave his life to Christ. May the power of God invade the earth again. So much that unbelievers will weep, will be convicted, and will fall and say, please, I want to know God. It's time to experience his power like never before. Do you understand that? Sometimes we just teach and preach and teach and weep, but when the power comes down, you don't need to talk much. Men will surrender to God. And I pray that God will anoint you. To become an instrument to turn many to righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. He says the earth itself will bring what increase marriage, business, academics, health. You know, everything will start releasing their increase when God comes into the equation, when the presence of God is unveiled. He says. As though that increase is not enough. He says, God, our own God shall bless us. Did you see that? And the blessing of the Lord, he makes one rich and ex excludes sorrow. He says, he has no sorrow to it. So, the key to attracting the blessing that will exclude sorrow and bring about riches, increase in your business, in your investment, in your labors is to engage the power of praise. Next verse. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. So there's a dimension of the blessing of God that will come upon a man and people will fear God. People will acknowledge God. Like in the days of Joseph. You know when his brothers came and saw him. Even when they knew he was their brother. They feared him. They still came and fell down. Because the Lord has so much blessed him. And you see the instrument that God used to bless him were not so powerful. Just the ability to interpret dreams. And then wisdom. To give cancer. May God equip you to develop in using your gifts in the mighty name of Jesus. Every one of us is gifted. And you see, if you will employ yourself to discover and develop in using your gifts, then the ends of the earth will fear God. Praise God. All right, in closing, let me read quickly to you uh, the book of John chapter 6 from verse 5. I want to read quickly to you a classical example of how Jesus engaged the power of thanksgiving, of praise. And as a result of that, there was increase. I'm going to read it very quickly. It says, Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread 
that these may eat. But this is said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. So that means that there is a solution to every problem. There's always what to do to turn the tide, to change the situation. And Jesus was never deficient in that knowledge. You know what he did to make wine available in John chapter 2 at the wedding in Cana? You remember what he did? He turned water to wine. You know what he did to pay the temple tax? I don't know where Judas Iscariot went to with the purse. But you see, Jesus was never stranded. I pray for you that grace to always know what to do. Be released upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Wisdom to always know what to do. Be released to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, He Himself knew what He would do. May you not run out Amen. of the solutions, the ideas, and the inspiration to turn things around. Amen. Let's first. It says, Philip answered him 200 dinary. What of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may have a little. You see, a dinaros is a day's wage. And he was saying that 200 will not be enough. It's just like if 3,000 Naira is a day's wage for a laborer. Now 200 of that is 600,000 Naira. 600,000 Naira worth of bread. You can imagine that. You know that would be for some bread it would be like 600 loaves of bread. And that will not be enough. If you multiply it by 20 slices, hmm, that will be 120,000 slices of bread. So it means the people that came there were more than 120,000. But that volume, that cost was paid off by miracle you understand not in financial terms you know in this season of financial crisis you need to find a way <laughs> maybe you have to bring out the chicken from the fridge and say oh lord thank you thank you thank you and you know it would, it would have been enough for only two persons by the time you finish giving thanks it will be enough I'm serious. It will be enough for the entire family for the next one week. And then you bless God and celebrate him. The rice will keep increasing. Amen. The oil will not be spent or dry up. You need to believe God for miracles these days. Do you understand that? Now this is just a foretaste of what it will be like in the reign of the Antichrist. When you can neither buy or sell without the mark of the beast. This one, you have money, but you can't even assess it. And there's nothing you can do. So you can understand why some persons will take the mark of the beast. Because when there's nothing to eat, you can't buy, you can't sell, you'll be forced to say, okay, I need to survive. Because you can't die of starvation. May you not miss the rapture. Mm. Let's run quickly so that we can begin to pray he says one of his disciples andrew simon's peter's brother said to him there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish it was his lunch maybe he was going to school he missed his way and joined the crowd a little lad he said but what are they among so many then Jesus said 
make the people sit down now there was much grass in the place so the men sat down in number about five thousand and you know in those days some of them had two wives three wives and so on some of them had 30 children 60 children <laughs> do you understand that all right he said and jesus took the loaves when and when he had given thanks oh god opened our understanding to understand the power of thanksgiving is god the same yesterday today and forever huh what did jesus do he fasted for seven days before the, the miracle could happen he only what he gave thanks he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted so he lifted up the bread gave thanks handed it over lifted up the fish gave thanks handed it over and i'm sure that peter looked at him and said this for this multitude and jesus said yes he wanted to say but lord he said keep quiet and peter must have felt i will tell you that this won't be enough so the first person he gave to he gave him a big chunk brah he said take but surprisingly by the time he wanted to pick the next chunk he discovered that the bread had come back to his normal size so he opened his eyes and looked at jesus and jesus smiled so he kept handing it over and you see all those people that receive as they receive the bread it also increased in size as they received the fish it increased in size and so they themselves began to say oh you mean it has increased where is my wife okay take this when the wife received it it was enough for the children all that jesus did was he gave thanks may complaining and murmuring cease in your life Amen. oh may you become a vessel of thanksgiving that you can wake up and all you do that day is just thank the Lord. Yeah. You know, sometimes we think that it's our prayer, oh Lord, protect us, oh Lord, fight for us, that keeps you standing and keeps you going and keeps you from accident and all of No, it's not. It's because He has kept you. Have there been times you didn't pray before you sleep and you slept off? You forgot to pray. Did you still wake up in the morning? I'm not saying we shouldn't pray for protection, <laughs> I'm just telling you that. It is not because you pray, even though you need to pray. It is because of his mercies. Do you understand that? So may you be given to thanksgiving, such that you can stay one whole week, one whole month, and all you do is, Lord, thank you. I worship you. I praise you. And you praise him in tongues. And you thank him. And you celebrate him. And then everything around you begin to surge in increase. Health, finances, business, academics, ministry. You know, everything just begin to grow by the power of thanksgiving. So when they were filled he said to his disciples gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost when they were what filled that means they've eaten and they've stored up all they need to store up because they were journeying back home so some mothers would have kept some bread and fish in their handbag some fathers may keep some in their pocket so, so that when they uh, Joshua comes and say, Biscuit, you know, I can just put my hand and say, Take. And then you know, some men eat. Hey, I used to eat those days. I used to eat. So, men, some men, oh my God, they can bring a mountain and bring it down. <laughs> Praise God. Ah. He says, so when they were filled. No, next verse, I've read that. Therefore they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five belly loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. Did you see the abundance that was left? 
This is what it means to have overflowing abundance. You have ministered, met needs, and yet there is still so much available. What the boy brought didn't fill one basket, but he has 12 baskets left. You see, the, his brother, his, his, you know, Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to what? To receive. More blessed to give than to receive. What he gave was five belly loaves and two small fish. Now what he's getting is what? Twelve baskets filled with fragments of bread and fishes. The power of increase activated by praise let's rise on our feet